What's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just on the Fan TV, man. Like, comment, and if you're new here and you like what you hear, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. More Ravens content coming, all right? So, yesterday was the Ravens pre-draft press conference, and things got a little hostile. Things got a little tense um, in the room, uh, to say the least, right? So, the topic of Lamar Jackson was brought up and shot down almost immediately. So, I put out a poll on the community tab uh, about, you know, what happened. Well, the Ravens right for shutting down questions about Lamar Jackson at the pre-draft press conference, okay? And a lot of people say, no, they weren't right about that. And I can see both sides of it. And, you know, from the Ravens' perspective, yes, this is a pre-draft press conference. We want to talk about the draft, right? But on the other side of it, the logical side of it is also Lamar Jackson, whether he's here or not, affects the draft tremendously. So if he's your quarterback, that affects the draft. If he's not your quarterback and you're looking for a new quarterback, that affects your draft. So I can get the fact of not wanting to answer all Lamar Jackson questions, but at the end of the day, it was a valid question. Now, where I think it was mishandled was how the Ravens PR team handled it, okay? So now when a guy asks the question, he cuts him off almost yelling, right? Because this is after somebody had asked about the Lamar Jackson trade request and somebody else had asked another question. I think this guy is the third guy in a row to say, well, with respect to, you know, the situation with Lamar Jackson. So before he even finished the question, the PR team cuts him off, right? Now, I think this could have been handled in a multitude of ways. One, you could have, before the press conference started, you know, with the cameras are off, you could have talked to the media and said was what's not allowed to be asked, right? Now, that's not a great look. Hey, I'm just saying what they could have done. Also, while the, the press conference was going on, what you could have did was let the guy ask this question. Because it ended up being a draft question. It was a draft rele relevant question. Let him ask his question. John Harbaugh, Eric DaCosta, they answered the question. And then as the as the PR team, you step in and say, okay, guys, look, they answered about three Lamar Jackson questions in a row. No more Lamar Jackson questions. Let's focus on the draft. That's what you could have did. Instead, we have the PR team yelling at a reporter, hey, 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 hey in the background. And it sounds uh, uncomfortable. It sounds like you're trying to silence the media, right? which is never really going to go over too well, all right? Now, the perception of the Ravens have always been that they're a well-run organization, that they're uh, a team that's top flight from, you know, top to the bottom, right? Everybody is in this an organization is, is, is well-run and put together and everybody knows they roll. This was one of the first times where it looked like everybody around was uncomfortable. It really did, right? You know, John Harbaugh, when that's going on, it's like he's in a hostage situation. He doesn't know what's going on. He looks like a deer in headlights looking around. Eric DaCosta, if he if he was sweating anymore, you know, his suit probably would turn a different color, right? So the Ravens have had a very, very weird offseason, and they've had an offseason where the perception of the team could be changing. The media will say that the Ravens have always been the well-run team, that they're still the well-run team, and that could be the reality of it, right? But it's, you got to think about how other people are viewing you, okay? We get the report about, the, the F minus in the, in the in the training staff with Steve Saunders. He's been an issue for numerous years, but he wasn't fired until this report comes out, right? You got this Lamar Jackson situation. You got a multitude of issues that's happening around where even the Greg Roman not being, you know, let go soon enough. So you have a team who's always been, I guess, media friendly, right? As far as the media looks at them as like one of the model franchises in the NFL. Right. So that perception could be changing just because of the fact of what's going on with Lamar Jackson. Now, fair or not. Now, you can say that the Ravens offered Lamar Jackson a lot of money. They did. You can say that they made him the or they were attempting to make him the second highest court paid quarterback ever. True. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that he's still not paid. OK. Now, where another part of perception comes in is the fact that of top players around the NFL. All right. They see what's going on with the Ravens, and all they care about is why is Lamar Jackson not paid? They're not going to say Lamar Jackson is demanding too much money. He's crazy for thinking he's going to get this. All they see is he's not paid. That's it. Simple as that. Now, maybe that won't affect the Ravens getting defensive players because, you know, hey, when you think of the Ravens, you think of defense, right? That's been the, the historical model. But offensively, yeah, it could very well affect them getting guys like your Odell Beckham, who's currently a free agent, who the Ravens made an offer to. If he sees what's going on here, why I come here, right? So the Ravens have to be careful about how they're being viewed. Like that pre-draft press conference, while yes, it's about the draft, you got to be able to sit there and prepare to be answered questions about Lamar Jackson. All right, and I can, like I said before, I can understand why you want to why you want to cut that off and say, hey, look, man, we're here to talk about the draft. Cool, but 
the PR team should have did that before the press conference started. Because now that now when the press conference is starting, we're in motion, right? All questions are coming out, right? As long as there's nothing inappropriate, as long as there's nothing um unprofessional, it can be asked, right? Um, and the media, honestly, they still ask questions about Lamar Jackson. They ask about the Ravens, where are they looking to draft a quarterback? Are the Ravens, um, where do you rank these quarterbacks in the draft this year? They ask all these kind of questions, right? So we can't be um, naive and think that it wasn't going to come up. And that's how it looks like. It looks like the Ravens just thought we were going to have a pre-draft press conference and we weren't going to talk about Lamar Jackson. Um, if they truly thought that, that's an insane thing to think because what else would the media want to ask about? I mean, the last thing that we heard between this press conference and the last one was Lamar Jackson's trade request. So of course it's going to come up. So the perception of the Baltimore Ravens, I keep going back to this point has always been a, a well-run team, top to bottom model franchise. This off season is putting a, a, a damage in that armor. Okay. Like I said, from your Steve Saunders to, to the Greg Roman thing to Lamar Jackson, it's little things that are chipping away at the perception of the team. And once you lose your perception, things could change for you. Now, the reality is that the Ravens could be doing just fine, right? The, everything inside the building could be great. Uh, negotiations are going on, whatever. But what we're looking at, what we're looking at on the outside, we're not privy to that. So all we see is a team that's like up there at the podium, shaking in their boots, asking questions about, the quarterback that they, that they just said that they love and won it 200%. That's what we see. Now, I'm not here to um, bash the Ravens for, for looking for other quarterbacks or looking for a contingency plan because they have to. You got to do your due diligence. I said this in the Anthony Richardson video. You got to look at all particular options. You can't limit yourself to one thing because once you do that, um, if Lamar Jackson isn't here now, you're scrambling for a plan. And the Ravens will never be the kind of team that's scrambling for a plan. They will always have three, four plans in a place. And hopefully that um, is good enough. All right. Um, so with this team, with where they're direction that they're heading, they have to, I would almost say, win back that, that viewpoint of how they are. Okay. Um, because once the media starts to question you, and it's already media members doing that, saying that, wow, things don't look good right now. I remember I saw Mike Jones tweet about that, oh, yeah, the Ravens totally have a handle on this Lamar Jackson thing, right? Or something to that extent, okay? When it starts to go left and you look like the team that you don't know what you're doing, then, then, you, <laughs> then the media can start to pile on. And that's something that the Ravens have never really experienced before outside of, honestly, probably Ray Rice, you know, in a situation like that. And then back in the day with Ray Lewis, right? So as far as on the field football things, the perception of the Ravens is vastly different than it's really ever been. Now, how do they change that? How can they maneuver to the fact where that they can put themselves back into the place of I respect they're, they're a respectable team, they're a franchise that's going on the right direction. Um, they got to figure out what they're doing at quarterback. One way or the other, they got to make a move. They got to plant a flag in the ground. By the time that the draft is over, a decision has to be made at quarterback because you're going to have your rookies come into the building and you're going to have the complete team in limbo. It's going to be time to install the offense. Well, really, it's already time to install the offense. So you're going to need a guy with a new offensive coordinator, Ty Munkin, who is ready to rock and roll and learn the offense. Right? Lamar Jackson is a great talent. He is, truly. But if he's going to show up first day of training camp or – maybe mandatory OTAs possibly, and that's going to be the first time he sees the playbook, the Ravens are going to be behind. And like I said, he's an exceptional talent, so maybe it won't affect him. It might not. But as a team, why not get ahead of it and say, hey, look, this draft, one way or the, one way or the other, we're going to know what's happening in that quarterback. Plain and simple. Simple as that. Because the longer you let this linger, the more it's going to affect next season. The Ravens aren't a team that's, built to win in a couple years they're built to win right now the um the topic of the offseason for the Ravens should have been hey man you know you add a couple of receivers add one cornerback and look you you want you want Super Bowl hunting because you got the, you got the MVP quarterback in place or former MV, MVP quarterback in place new offensive system guy that's going to be more modern more update and you still got that defense at the back half of the year was a top five defense 
That's what should be the conversation. But it said the conversation is not that. It's other things. And the Ravens have to find a way to resolve this situation or the perception, the mood, the vibes, as Rashad Bateman say, we can just continue to go down. So as we look now into this season, I'm looking at draft night, man. Um, if I'm the Ravens, this decision on Lamar Jackson needs to be made. Either you pay him what, what, what you want to pay him or, or, or what he wants, whatever, however that comes, or you trade him, right? Um, I hope he's here. Hope he gets paid. But at the end of the day, this situation has dragged on long enough. It's dragged on to the point where you guys can't even answer questions without looking uncomfortable. And when we get to that point, it's time for something to change. Either pay or trade. Y'all made the decision. Um, so if you stay to this point in the video, man, you like what you heard, man, consider hitting that subscribe button. More Ravens content coming at you. Uh, it's Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.